Okay, so here is the tutorial for the CG Sphere. I have here already the background, so I'm going to take it, click, drag, and drop into a composition button. And we've seen before that this is just a little handheld shot of this underground parking space. And now I'm going to bring in the first CG Pass by going into the file and import file. Here I got the CG main folder. Here's the color subfolder. I'm selecting the first image, making sure it's a target sequence. And now After Effects is going to ask me what to do with the alpha channel. As I explained in class, in these cases, we're going to go with the pre-multiplied. Let's click OK. And I can put it on top of my first layer. So I have here the, uh, the sphere and it's needs some work in terms of having it covered and also we need to simulate it's going through this um, dark space. So what we need to do is first of all rename the layers. This one is going to be BG for background. This one is going to be sphere color. So I know that this is the color pass and now I need to simulate the light coming from this light source that we have here, this large light fixture. So in order to do that, we're going to go to Layer, New, Solid. The color of the solid is not going to matter right now, but we're going to call this Dark 2 Light. We're going to make sure it's Comp Size, click OK. And on top of that, we're going to go to Effects, Generate, and we have the Gradient Ramp. And in here, we're going to make sure that the start of the ramp is going to be white, end of the ramp is going to be black, and we can even change it to a radial ramp if needed. I'm going to take this dark to light layer, I'm going to open up its transformation, I'm going to change the opacity to about 30% so I can see right through it. I'm going to take the start of the ramp and I'm going to put it right in the center of this light fixture. And now I can take the end of the ramp and put it somewhere over here in order to simulate the dark edges. I'm going to take the opacity back on the dark to light. I'm going to increase it back to 100%. And I can now modify the end of the ramp and just pushing it a little bit over here. Now the reason I'm doing that, and of course I can always come back and change the end of the ramp coordinates, is because I want to make sure that it is simulate the light fall off that I have in this little nook here. So in this case, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to punch a hole that is animated and it follows the sphere because we want it to be covering the sphere and then allowing the sphere to come into the light. So I'm going to take my sphere color layer, duplicate it by command D, and I'm going to call this dark to light alpha. And what I'm doing is I'm going to use the alpha channel on it in order to punch a hole in my gradient. I'm going to switch from switches to modes. And in here I'm going to tell it your track mat is the alpha of the layer above you. So now that I have this, I can see that it comes from a dark area and when it gets a little bit lighter in here, it starts to light up and then of course it continues according to what the gradient and how the gradient is set up. Once it's here, I can always go back and tweak it a little bit if I need, but I think that for now I'm pretty happy with the end color. We also went ahead and we fixed the issue with the alpha. Because we pre-multiplied the alpha, we got this hairline around the alpha, which means the alpha has shrunk a little bit. So if I go back to the dark to light alpha layer, I can go into the effects, channel, minimax, and in here I can keep the operation on maximum and just increase the radius by by one. Now nothing had happened because I haven't changed the channel to be the alpha. As you can see now it covers it. In this case I also can take my dark to light layer and change its blending mode to multiply if needed. But I'm also going to have to animate at one point the opacity of this layer. So let's go back and see exactly how this layer behaves. So it comes, it passes through, and it probably around here, around frame 47, or maybe a couple of frames before that, I'm going to have to start revealing the opacity. So around frame 40, I'm going to right-click and say Add Keyframe on Dark to Light Opacity Attribute. And if I now jump to frame 47, in here I can just pretty much kill the opacity 
completely when this sphere is getting closer to the light source. So let's see how it behaves. So it's dark, 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 and then it just reveal itself. I might even take these couple of keyframes by left mouse button click, drag, and highlight these two, and just push them a little bit by maybe uh, three or four frames back, as the timing is most crucial here. Okay, so now I can go back to File, Import File, and I'm going to bring in the shadow. The shadow, as you remember, we're going to have to split that layer. So I'm going to select the first file, click on Target Sequence, Open, and here we can pre-multiply as well. It's not going to matter a lot because the shadow is going to be multiplied on the rest of the shot. And I'm going to take the shadow and just put it on top of everything. Now, I didn't put it in the right way, so I'm going to open up this layer and I'm going to click on Reset. So it's going to put it back in the default position. So there's my shadow. As we've seen in class here, the shadow has been rendered where there's a little bit of a hiccup here. So we're going to have to animate this little layer. But we need to find where exactly this layer needs to be split because not only that we have the shadow falling on the door, but we also have the shadow casting itself on top of this hood of the car. We're going to need to find a frame in which we can split the layer. But first things first, let's select the shadow layer and call this shadows 001 and then the split layer is going to be renamed shadow 002 and we're going to find a layer somewhere where the shadow here the first part disappears and there's a few dead frames before the shadow reappear right here somewhere around here we can go to edit split layer and this is going to be shadow 002 let's close these for now and let's deal with the first part of the shadows so the shadows when they come into effect, they start off at the wrong area. We have a little bit of a hiccup here. Now let's see which one's the first frame. This is the first frame. This is frame 60. So I'm going to open up the attributes of the transform and I'm going to the position. I'm going to click on the stopwatch in order to create a keyframe. And I'm going to use my arrow keys, the one that points up, in order to line it up right here. And then I'm going to find the last piece of the shadow that falls here before it disappears. So I got all the way up to here. There's the shadow, there's the contact. As you can see, because we moved that layer, there's an issue. And now we just need to find the one frame before the shadow disappears, which is right here. So I'm going to take the position and I'm going to use now the down arrow key in order to put this back where it's supposed to be, right over here. So I've created a little bit of animation on the shadow layer. And when it comes to this shadow, it's a little bit too harsh. So shadow two, I can take it in order to punch a hole in the footage itself. And then that footage is going to get multiplied in order to create the shadow. And don't forget that we need also to create reflections when it comes to the hood of the car. So let's deal with shadows two, this layer, I can close it. And with shadow two, I can now take my background and duplicate it by hitting Command D or Control D. This layer that I just duplicated is going to be renamed Hood Shadows. And I'm going to put it right under Shadows 2. And in here, I'm going to tell Hood Shadows, your track mat is the alpha above you. Now, of course, if I just solo this layer, that's all I get because this is where the alpha of the shadow is. Well, that's pretty easy because now I can unsolo the layer and we can rename this shadows to alpha. So I know that this is the alpha generator for this layer. And this layer can be multiplied. So I get some of the shadows back. Now, because there's no contact shadows and it's just cast shadows between this sphere and the hood of the car, plus there's so much light bouncing off of this wall into the hood of the car, then the shadows here are not going to be completely opaque. If I want to make them completely opaque, I can take this layer and go into Effects, Color Correction, and there's my curves. And with the curves, I can just lower down the curve on the RGB in order to make those shadows a bit darker. While I'm doing, I'm just changing the color of the layer here. But because this layer is multiplied, then we get 
a darker effect. Great, so we got the shadows working, but the shadows are a little bit too harsh. We need to soften them up a bit. So I'm going to the alpha layer, because remember, this is the layer that will determine how this layer will look like in terms of the edges and what is seen through the alpha channel. And in here, I'm going to effects, blur, and I got, of course, the channel blur. And in here, I'm going to just play with the alpha blurriness. I'm going to give it about 2.5 because I want the decimal point to go into the sub pixel and blend this really nicely. So we got really nice shadows in here. Now we need to create the reflection on the hood of the car and the reflection is going to be based on the uh, sphere color layer. So highlighting the sphere dash color layer and then hitting the command D or control D if it's a Mac or a PC in order to duplicate the layer, we can call this layer now Reflections. This is going to be the reflections of the sphere. We're going to take these and put it either on top of the shadows or behind the shadows. It doesn't really matter at this point. So I'm going to put it right on top. Now I'm going to open up the attributes for the transformation and I'm going to concentrate on the scale. I'm going to break the connection on the scale and I'm going to rotate it around the Y by putting a negative 100% which is going to cause it to be a exact replica or a mirror image of the original layer. Now what I need to do is under these reflections I'm going to make sure that they're not seen until that sphere starts to hover above the hood of the car here. So it's about right, right here. So I'm going to take this layer, Reflections, and using the down arrow key, I'm just going to hold it and let that layer go down. Or I can even go right ahead and take the position's Y axis and just push it over here. And then just check to see how the reflection looks like. Okay, it needs to be pushed a bit more down and check it again. Not bad. The first thing we're going to do on the reflections layer is to distort the image. So if I go to effects and under distort, I have the mesh warp. And in here with the mesh warp, I'm going to increase the number of rows to nine and the number of columns also to nine. And now I'll be able to use each and every one of those points that connects the grid in order to distort the, ref the image of the reflections. So there's my mesh warp. And all I need to do is just click on a connecting point and just make it follow the shape of the hood of the car. If you get a straight line between two points, you can use the, the handles in order to make them a bit more curvy. There, right here, I'm going to take this, there's the handle and make it a bit curvy. And there's this point, push it down. There's the handle, click drag in order to rotate it. And there's another point here, which I need to push all the way down. There's the handle. So you guys get the idea. After the first row of points that I've changed, I can also grab the points underneath it in order to really give it a nice distortion as we know that the shape that holds the reflection is distorting the image due to the fact that its shape is actually causing it to get distorted. Now right over here, I can also take this point, raise it up a bit, and all I'm doing is I'm following the natural curve of this hood of the car. And then this one really doesn't leave a lot of space between this line and this line. Okay, and then this point, just push it up. And now we can check the distortion again. Very, very nice. After the mesh warp, I can go to effects, blur, and now I can call for the box blur. And in here I can add a bit of a radius with a decimal point, but not too high, something like 2.2 and maybe even 1.4, that's more like it, in order to make sure it blends properly with the rest of this footage. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to take the reflections and I'm going to put it right under the shadows right over here. So we get the reflections and we get the shadows as well. After the box blur, I can go into effects and take the color correction and then go with the 
hue saturation and as a matter of fact i'm going to put it right above the blur because i like to keep the blur as one of the last effects that need to be put here and i'm going to take the master lightness just increase it a bit and the master saturation and decrease it in order to kill some of the color so now we got a nice looking reflection which is almost done and then what i need to do is just grab the reflections layer blending mode and change it to overlay with the overlay i'll get a very nice reflection that blends with the rest of the pixels on the hood itself and the rest of the pixels are the reflection of the environment so that's pretty good I can take the reflections opacity and lower it down a bit because I don't want to lose some of the details that I have in the shadows and then I can just test it again nice reflections nice distortion I got nice shadows and of course I got everything working so far so good there's my shadows on the top and then the shadows on the hood with the reflection very nice so now that the reflection is done we can deal with the other two issues one of the issues is the sphere is being shown through the wall which shouldn't be it actually should come from this little area here so you probably guessed i'm going to take my background layer i'm going to duplicate it and i'm going to change its name to foreground this is going to be my foreground element and I'm going to put it right on top. And then I'm going to use roto shapes in order to cover what I don't want to show. So I took the rectangle tool and I drew a simple rectangle and just cover it right over here. And I'm using just a portion of the door because don't forget that there's shadow that's supposed to come and be exposed on the door. I'm not going to animate these roto shapes because it's just going to waste some tutorial time and you do know how to roto shape and how to use the masks um, path animation and then another roto shape is going to be drawn with the roto bezier in order to block the pipe here which should be covering also part of the sphere Again, this roto shape is not that accurate and I'm not going to animate it. It's just to show you the process and make sure that both masks do overlap. Very important because you don't want to show the sphere between gaps in the masks, as you can see here. One of the last steps to do on this uh, footage is to basically recreate the unique lens flares that we get through the camera due to the intensity of the light here. So as we explained in class, these lens flares have two main components. We have the core and then we have the light fall off. So in order to work with these or duplicate them, I'm going to need to go to layer, new, solid. There's going to be a white solid. I'm going to call this sphere flares. I'm going to change the layers blending mode temporarily to multiply and I'm going to push my timeline to where the sphere is supposed to be right under these flares. Maybe one more frame. There we go. So I'm going to take the rectangle tool making sure I'm standing on sphere flares and you can see I can see some of the flares here and here. So I'm going to click drag and draw a single shape, a very thin single shape i can take this now this shape just about there and i can select the mask this point holding shift and this point and just use my arrow keys to stretch and make sure that these are stretched enough and this whole mask I just need to move a little bit and i'm going to call this mask one core i'm going to duplicate the mask it's going to be mask one fall off and mask one fall off is going to have a bit of a feather as a matter of fact let's just solo these two for now just to see what's happening so i'm going to feather a bit mask feather here and just give it 2.5 that's nice and the opacity is going to be changed to about 35 percent the first mask i'm going to give it a bit of a feather not much about 0.2 or maybe even 0.1 and then the opacity on this mask is going to be about 50 percent so we got some sort of a flare here and i'm going to duplicate these masks mask one and mask two command d there's the core two i'm going to put it right above fall off two and i'm going to just going to change also the color of the mask so i know exactly which one goes where and i'm going to Bring back everything else by unchecking the solo mode. 
select core 2 and fall off 2 and just using the arrow keys to push it to the other side so it lines up with this line right here I don't know if you can see it in the video okay so now we're gonna take sphere flares which have now two different masks which create two different flares this is at 100% and I'm going to change it from multiply to normal and I am going to pre-comp this layer on, on top of itself so I'm going to layer pre-compose and I'm gonna make sure that I move all attributes into the new composition and I'm gonna call this sphere flares all so it's gonna be a layer by itself and as you can see the flare is a bit sharp it has a sharp ending here and here so I'm gonna take my little ellipse tool and I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and while I'm on this layer I'm going to draw a sphere that is very similar in shape and size to the sphere that I have rendered out here great if I just double click on it a little bit because I want to increase it again the size that is holding shift again not much bring it back to the center very good and then I'm going to animate on this mask I'm going to animate the opacity as well as the feather because if I now increase the feather then I get this very nice fall off of those two lines that's supposed to generate the lens flare and I'm also going to take the expansion increase it just a tad not much and then lower down the opacity quite a bit so I get exactly that same softness now, I am on opacity of 30 but this is based on my screen settings so now on mask opacity I'm gonna put a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch mask feather keyframe and mask expansion I can also put a keyframe there now I'm going to jump back frame by frame by holding the command key or control key on the keyboard and left arrow key one two three four five six then I'm going to give it mask opacity of zero and the feather is going to be zero as well and the expansion is going to also be negative five so if I now jump to the next keyframes where I started with right here and I go with again with my timeline forward this time one two three four five six seven maybe and then here mask opacity is going to be reduced again to zero feather zero and mask expansion minus five the minus will cause whatever in the mask to shrink so let's see how this little simulation now works so for these little two um, flare lines that I've created I wanted to simulate the light hitting the top of this CG sphere and then it kind of flares for a second and then it goes away very nice so the last step would be to actually add the proper grain to everything that we added and that is mainly the layers that have the reflection and the color and one thing that we did forget actually is just to add the specularity now there is by by the default render there is some specularity in it and that is because of this environment that was projected as a texture on the sphere now um, this highlight here is actually a reflection or I should say a projection of the light that was here on the ceiling so I'm going to file import file and in here I'm going to the specularity selecting the first image making sure it's a target sequence of course clicking on open I can pre multiply it or ignore it because it's just going to get screened on everything and then I'm going to take my specularity and put it right above the color layer call it sphere specs and it's going to get either added or screened there it is screened and because it really blows up the colors in here I can go to the transformation and just lower a bit the opacity to about 50% so the uh, sphere specularity is done so let's go back to the color layer and now we can go to effects and we can go into noise add grain and of course we have the preview window and in here we're gonna have to work per channel so I'm gonna switch my composition view to red and the first thing we're gonna change is the aspect ratio to 0.91 because the original footage has a aspect ratio of 0.91 
and I'm moving back a bit and forward just to make sure how the noise on the red channel behaves. So I need to change a bit of the softness. I'm going to increase a bit of the softness and I'm going to lower just tad on the size and I can increase the intensity on the main tweaking area. But since we're working on the red channel, I will have to go into the channel intensities and the channel sizes and work it here. I'm going to increase some, not too much on the red intensity because you can see what happens. I'm going to bring just a little bit, like 1.1 on the red. Now I'm going to switch to the green channel and it seems that the green channel needs a bit of changes on the size and a little bit on the intensity as well. And then the blue channel, which has a different level of noise, its size needs to be increased and a bit of the intensity as well. So if I now switch to the RGB, I see that the noise is a little bit too sharp on the sphere. So I can take the general intensity and just lower it. And then I can also go to the blend with original and try to find a proper percentage of how much of the original is shown and how much the noise I itself is shown. That looks, that looks pretty good. So all I have to do now is go to the viewing mode and change it from preview to final output. And then I can take this add grain, copy it by hitting Alt C or Command C and then go to the reflections layer and just add it to the reflections. Now with the reflections, I already have the original noise coming in, but I can always have a little bit more noise and then I just paste this. But in here, I'm going to change the blend with original and it's going to be a much higher number, which means the original is pretty much taking over the noise. But I'm still leaving a bit of space for the noise to be there. So there you have it. This is the sphere from start to finish. And this is to show you how to integrate CG layers with live footage.